Well, Craig Warriner, a fellow who's larger than life, is sitting in Sun City Jail near Johannesburg. Well, in fact, in Naturina, just to the south of Johannesburg. And the victims of this Ponzi scheme operator number in the thousands. They go from many of the people who went to Warriner's ex school, St. Stithians, right through deeply into the colored and Indian communities, helped there by various financial advisors who are surely going to have their day of reckoning too. But what we've got now is a conversation with a victim, somebody who has invested with BHI Trust, and we'll find out exactly how they did it. Thanks for joining us. You've preferred to stay anonymous, and I respect that. Uh, and you have sent me some documentation. How did you get to hear about this BHI Trust or Mr. Warner, if you even knew that he existed? Yeah, thank you, Eric. Um, so basically speaking, um, I had uh, some money invested in Investec and other banks. And um, in the COVID period, I found it very difficult to access money if it was in fixed deposits and your money was tied up and the interest rates at that time were very low. I mean, the interest rates at that time, I think they were at like 5% after the COVID period. So then what happened was I didn't know a couple of people and was chatting about investments. And I know of a, a very good friend of the family who had invested in the BHR for many, many years. In fact, spoken to me about it as early as 2010 to say, you know, he's in this thing and his family's been in it for many years and it was uh, working very well. I looked at it and I thought about it for a while and I didn't take it initially as, as a major like investment. And I started putting a little bit of money in there and I saw that the returns were quite good and the percentages looked good. So I, at first I put 500,000 and then we invested two and a half million into the thing. And then in beginning of this year, it's just 2023, January, I put in additional money that I'd moved from other funds. The total of about $6 million was invested in this thing. And the interest was growing quite well. And speaking to other people, they lived off this BHI. What a lot of people did is invested their money in it and they would draw monthly uh, debit orders off the account because you could do that. So if you had 200, 000, uh, $2 million or whatever it was, you would be able to draw 20000 a month and your capital would stay constant and your capital gains taxes were only 18%. So looking back at the history, I mean, you've got the thing in front of you. You can see how the um, tables look from 1999 is when the, the first year that this thing was operating. You look at that. And you can look at all the different uh, percentages for year on year. They were sort of average between 12, well, before the, the 2008, they were only in the averaging about 17%, I would say. And then after 2008, they dropped to about 12% on average. So I thought, oh, that makes sense. You know, economic times changed and investment maybe found it difficult. And it did okay in the 2008. So I thought that looks like a solid investment. You can't go wrong with it. That's what the decisions were to take on this DHR. So you say you have 6 million rand invested here. That's, that's right. And before we go deeper into it, what are your expectations of getting that money back? Okay, so when I went to my investment broker, who I've sent to you, they explained this thing to me as being very solid. Okay, and I did my investigations. I went to the financial um, what you call the Financial Services Conduct Authority and checked up the numbers. I found BHR's number. I found my, obviously my financial advisor, his numbers there. And we, we look at all these other companies that are in, implicated in here, like for instance, Exum Capital Management. They're a financial service provider. SP Read and uh, F Refocus is all mentioned on the documentation here. So when you start looking at things like this and you follow and you do a little bit of investigating, you think that this thing is solid. And if you read on the clauses on this thing, it will say, I'll read it to the, the clients of yours very briefly. This, uh, I'm just reading one paragraph. I can't read the whole thing, but here it goes. It says, this means that Imara Re, ETY Limited, FB Focus Securities are members of the JSC Trust Fund, which ensures that in the event of any default, the JSC Trust Fund will make good any fraudulent loss 
incurred by the JEC registered stockbroking firm. And then in bold, it is written here, please note that Imara SP Reed PDY Limited and Afri Focus Securities at all times hold your investment funds. So, and then the next little paragraph, it says, the BHI mandate, which you signed, regulates and confirms that the contractual relationship between you and Craig Warrener, the investment manager, Axel Capital Management, PDY Limited, and Imara SP Reed Limited and Afri Focus. So, when you look at that and your investment, your, your financial broker, your financial advisor is telling you this is solid, you look at this, and you do your research, you see all the companies are on the, on the financial um, securities, and you start looking at the thing, you see, okay, I've got um, protection here. Uh, the, the financial broker that I used, I won't mention his name, but he was part of the Masters Financial Advo um, Advisors Association. And... The CFP, which is, I think, an American-affiliated uh, uh, financial uh, provider's uh, certification. So I didn't use uh, just any kind of a financial advising firm. And just to top this all off, the financial advisor that got me signed into this and fell ill. So he handed his portfolio over to a company um, a lot bigger than him, and they've taken over the, over the portfolio. And... When they interviewed, we, we had like an online uh, discussion with the clients and they interviewed all the clients to ask what the expectations are in the investments. They raised no concerns. They took over the whole portfolio of the BH ad manager. I think the, my financial advisor had about 500 clients in this, maybe a little bit less, but it was something in that region from what I understand. And he took it over, they took it over to... Um, another company, which is a lot larger, and they never raised any concerns about the BHI. They just took it over and said, okay, your money's with us now, and we'll, we'll look after you as a client. What company was so that that took it over? That is Global and Local. Okay. That global and Local. All roads are leading back to this Global and Local. Do you know that the guy who runs Global and Local, a fellow called Hal Dane, uh, until fairly recently, yes. a couple of years ago, he operated out of two houses on Barry Herzog Road. And then he did a lease on the metal box house in Mill Park, which gives him or gives the impression that he runs his business runs the whole building, but he's got two floors there. Yes. And I see what on the from, top. Yeah. That's interesting. So your impression was that they were much bigger than your broker. Uh, and this this appears to be well. They're a, they're a central character. You're the second person I've spoken to now of two uh, who was introduced, or rather had their investments through this organisation, this global and local. They do seem to be. Uh, they've got a, a branch in Lanasia, uh, so they're very deep into the Indian and coloured community. They do seem to be quite did know uh, quite they're involved. Local. So they took over the. The five hundred odd clients from your financial advisor because he he wasn't great. Have you met? Have you been into this global and local? No, I haven't been. More is it? The investment was put in file into my wife's name. Um, so I, I, when I started with my financial advisor, through a guy I is uh, known for many years. This guy fell ill. Unfortunately, he had a brain tumor, so it wasn't his fault. He was quite a decent man. In fact, he had his money invested. And I can give you more context of people that you can speak to that have lost a lot of money. Some families have lost total money. And I, from what I understand, this financial advisor of mine, his family was heavily invested in this, and I think that they have also lost money from what I understand. When you, things. When you look at those returns uh, that they sent you, yes. they're all sure. after 2008. Now we know that Warrener of BHI Fund uh, lost a lot of yeah. money in 2008, and he started operating a Ponzi scheme from there. So for the last 15 years, he's been taking money from fresh investments and giving it to, to people who needed it. It's, it. it's a classic Ponzi scheme, and he kept losing all that time. But it, it, what was interesting to me looking through those numbers is it's, uh, and I'll read them, 13.9, 13.9, 12.2, 12.7, 12.7. 13.7, 12.9. That's the, the annual return, kind of 12, 13. Yeah. He, we now know he just made these numbers up, 
But I suppose when you sure. see that, it it sounds solid, doesn't it? It sounds like a like a real. Uh, they know what they're doing. Unfortunately, this is classic Ponzi scheme. Exactly, Wendy. But this is where my question comes in. If financial advisors selling this product, who are all registered and licensed, including the financial, the, if I get this little name, wasn't correct. The, the financial, where is it? The financial security, FSCA, the Financial Service Conduct Authority. Mm. Surely, if these people are registered, all of these financial advisors, they should be checking up. I mean, BHI is actually a listed company there on the on their system. And what does make sense when you do the check? They do say here, which was the only thing I, that I found suspicious, but it does make sense because when you go onto the the FSCA's website and you put in BHI Trust, comes up with their number. But I'll read this to the Listeners, this is, this is the BHI strategy fund. It says, although the BH investment fund is recognized and authorized to trade by the FCA, it is currently classified as an unregulated fund due to the fact that it is neither a unit trust fund nor a hedge fund. The BHI investment fund does not conform to the definition of either a unit trust fund nor that of a hedge fund. These are the only two classifications available at the moment. The classification application was submitted to the FCA October 2018, and we are still waiting for the FCA for final classification decision. Now, if you go onto their website, it does say PMD. So yeah. that wasn't a lie. It was written there. So when you look at this, you start to think, okay, that I was, I was worried about the financial advisor said, that's not, not the problem. He explained it in his words that I can't remember exactly. And yeah, the, the thing that, we looked at was this, that this is protected by the JC Trust Fund. So I don't know where this comes. I need to find out from the lawyers now where this all comes in or not, whether it's true or lies or what it is. Well, it's interesting, all of that. But just to just to add to all of this, I did approach AfriFocus and I said, can I please talk with you about the BHI Trust, Mr. Warner? And here's their response from Alicia Pillay, who's the Chief Operating Officer. Good afternoon, Alec. BHI Trust has been a client of AfriFocus Securities, as you say, a member of the JSE, that invested in the Nedbank corporate saver on a non-discretionary mandate. In line with the mandate, AfriFocus Securities acted only upon instruction from the client. In terms of client confidentiality, we cannot disclose any client information. In other words, get stuffed, we're not going to tell you anything, and actually it's not our fault. Interesting, isn't it? That you, you, what you've told me is because of a name like AfriFocus, you say, well, these guys must be legit. But when the poor boy hits the fan, AfriFocus says, uh oh, not us. We only acted on this instruction from the client. Doesn't give you much confidence. And then there's also SP Reed, Imara SP Reed. So maybe I should read to the clients, or unless you want to read, I'll give you the document about what Mr. Craig Warren has. I think your reading skills are a bit better. Maybe you should just read it after them so that it explains, or should I read it? You, then. You, it, We don't need to do that. Essentially, what okay. has happened here is that you had a, you had a crook, but like a super crook. He's yeah. been going for 30 years. Yeah. And he, yeah. he, was, he was cooking the books, you can be sure, right from the start, because yeah. crooks don't just suddenly, leopards don't suddenly get spots. And from 2008, it was classic Ponzi scheme. But what is interesting to me is that he preyed upon St. Stithian's old boys. Uh, there are teachers there who put in three million. Can you imagine as a teacher, three million? It's kind of everything you've got. Oh, wow. They've, there's, yeah. There are, uh, there's a, at the St. Stithian school up on the hill, there's this very fancy club, which he funded. He also funded the yes. uh, sports high performance area he funded many of the bursaries so that's on the one side and then you've got this organization called global and local which only last week had the people from alan gray there giving a presentation and global and local is very much in a different market segment uh works in lanasia uh art lens the colored and indian area so you've got this very rich part on the one side very um, ordinary, a middle class part. And then in between, you've got other brokers as well. So it looks like 
the tentacles of this fellow just reached far and wide. And when the money ran out, which now appears to be the case, uh, he just hands himself into the police, says, please give me a single cell because they're going to they're gonna kill me. Yeah. Where does it put you? So, it puts me in a very, very difficult position. You know, fortunately, I still run a business and uh, I have uh, other means. Look, this was a lot of money, substantial loss. Uh, I, I can give you a person that has lost basically everything because he put his retirement off this and he put 2.9 million in this and he was getting 20,000 rand a month and he basically is retired on that money. So now he has no income. He's got some retirement and units aren't doing very well. So he, he gets maybe 3,000 a month or something in that order for from that. So he's totally lost. So my position is this money was allocated for other purposes and that the reason why I had this money in here, it was because I was looking at immigration and we needed to get our tax clearance and be able to push the money overseas as soon as I could access it. So I didn't want to put it into an investment that locked me down for a year because we were waiting for exchange rates and things to to level out and start moving. So I was waiting for tax clearances. My, my auditors were busy with that stuff. So in order to move your money, you've got to go through all the, those uh, bells and whistles. So you need your money available when you want to. And the advantage of this BHR trust was it said that the trust you, you can pull the money out within a month, basically. You have to give your, your notice. If you're pulling all the funds out, you have to give it on the 8th of the month. And you would have your money within basically a month. So that made sense. And that's why we kept it in this. And the interest rates the interest rates were low in other investments compared to this. And when I saw other companies like uh, Local and Global took over it, I was comfortable as well. So... That should have been maybe the point where I should have started looking at maybe other things when, when I saw that the financial advisor that I'd used um, was small and they had moved it over just to another uh, medium-sized company. None of the bigger companies knew about BHI when I even tried to discuss it with them. So that was a, a maybe another alarm bell. And what so, does what does global and local this broking firm that has metal box the old metal box house in mill park have you approached them have they responded they've been look it was local and global that sent the first last week friday in fact in two o'clock last week friday the first uh email came from local and global stating that there's a issue uh, with the bhi trust which I can send you all that documentation, uh, and that uh, Mr. Craig Warren has been allegedly implicated in fraud. That was Friday at two o'clock. Then, 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 then they sent another email on. I think it was a Saturday, and then then everything came up that he'll be in the court on the Monday. Uh, when he went to court, Monday was in I think in the High Court, if I'm not mistaken. That it was a magistrate's it's court in Katlehong. There was one person of interest who was there, and that was Vanna Kaywood. The, uh, the the lawyer from Pretoria who's now representing victims. Have you been back to uh, Local and Global and asked them what's going on or are you relying on their communication? I tried to phone them. You leave messages. My wife was contacted. You don't get the response. They just hand it to a person. They said they'll get back to you. Then now we are getting, uh, currently what we are receiving now is the um, documentation from Kaywood or sending documentation out for everyone to be represented because Kaywood now uh, are taking on all the clients and maybe join. I don't know. I've got some of the documents I haven't signed. I was going to look at it the weekend. Um, they want everybody to pitch in 7,500 Rand now to start uh, the legal proceedings to be represented in the uh, case here. So local and global has actually gone quiet now. There's not so much communication out of them. Meaning we're getting more communication from the lawyers at the moment than from local and global. Well, thank you very much for sharing your uh, deeply personal and a very sad story with us. Hopefully it will shine a bit more light yeah. on this Ponzi scheme, which is or the likes of which South Africa hasn't seen for decades. I'm Alec Hogg from business.com. <laughs>